so in this video we'll be discussing how to lay out plumbing plans and we'll dis uh, discuss covering uh, laying out plumbing uh, cold water hot water vent waste gas piping on the plumbing plans we'll also discuss some CAD standards in laying out and labeling of the plumbing piping on the plumbing plans uh, we'll discuss also general design guidelines in the layout of riser locations and service entry locations. We'll discuss determining uh, when sewage pumps and sump pumps are required and some uh, information on the gas ban uh, regulations in New York City. So I'll first talk about the gas ban in New York City. So uh, in 2023, the rule is that newly constructed buildings under seven stories will not allow gas for cooking or space heating. Basement is considered a story and cellars are not. So uh, when you look into this uh, seven story uh, requirement, uh, it only deals with uh, newly constructed buildings. So any existing buildings can continue to function uh, and operate on gas if they have it. But for any newly constructed buildings in the year 2023, that is under seven stories, will not be allowed to have a new gas service for cooking or space heating. And in 2027, the rule will apply to taller buildings. Uh, there are some exceptions, and those include hospitals, commercial kitchens, and laundromats. And the purpose of these gas bans is to basically uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which basically warms up the planet. And by minimizing gas piping in a building, you are also reducing the risk of building explosions, which actually does happen in New York City. And, and there have been several gas explosions in New York City. So it appears that if you have, let's say, an existing building, right, with uh, three floors, and uh, this is a residential building. If one of these floors is being renovated, let's say this floor here, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a, a new stove top, we have new gas fired uh, furnaces, uh, that should be allowed since this is an existing building where a portion of that existing building is being renovated. So it appears that the gas band wouldn't apply to that case. All right, so when we uh, do the line types, so this is the plumbing symbol list. And if you look down here, uh, you'll see the cold water line, uh, which this is the symbol for it. And underneath that, you'll see the hot water, uh, the hot water recirculation, the vent piping, which is just dashes. Uh, and you have the soil piping. And it's dashed if it is underground and a continuous line if it is above the floor. And you have uh, storm drainage. And if you look here, you'll see there's a SD uh, in this line type. And for gas piping, there is a G in the line type here. So these line types, uh, the scaling is defaulted to one on the plans. And the line type scale factor should be set to below. So if it's a, 20, if it's a quarter inch scaling, uh, which is commonly used, or an eighth inch, these are two common uh, use scales, then you need to use the corresponding uh, scaling for that. So it's 24 and 48 for an one eighth inch scaling. Now the line type scaling can be viewed and changed by typing in uh, the command LT scale. Okay, so this is an example of a plumbing plan. And if you look here, this is a bathroom. You have a lavatory, water closet, and a bathtub here. This is the cold water line. If you click this, you can see it's on the correct layer. P for plumbing, cold water. Uh, the color is set by layer. The line type is set by layer. And this is the line thickness. Uh, this doesn't really matter since it doesn't show on the model space, uh, but you can click it by layer. Uh, this, it, it doesn't matter because when if you have a certain setting, you can actually see the thickness on the model space based on this, but uh, we don't have that set. So all lines, regardless of what size is indicated here, you know, will be shown with this line thickness in the AutoCAD drawing. 
So this uh, wouldn't matter what you select. Now, if you go into this line type, you click it, and you right click, and you hit properties, or you type in S, you can see right here is the line type scale. It's set to one. So this would be a default value. Now for a quarter inch scale, the LT scaling down here, so you could just type in LT scale, hit enter, and you'll get this uh, command line here. And it says enter new line type scale factor. Right now it's set at 24, which is for a quarter inch scale. If the scaling looks correct in model space, but not in paper space, it is possible the PSLT scale command is set to one. So before it was the LT scale, but in this case it's the PS, so plot style line type scale is the way I understand. And this PSLT scale is uh, set to one or zero. So there's two options for it. Now, if the PSLT scale uh, is set to zero, it will keep the look of the line type the same in relation to the background as the viewport is scaled. So it's kind of scaling everything together, the line type as well. Now, if the PSLT scale is set to one, that will scale the line type so that it shows up the same measurement that is in the model space in paper space regardless of the viewport scaling. So let me demonstrate what this means in AutoCAD. So here is uh, some of the line types. I, I'm just looking at the plumbing symbol list here. So if I click this, it's on the correct layer. The line type scale is one. And same with the hot water, the hot water research etc and they all kind of look like this right so if you just kind of picture this now if I go into my viewport where my viewport here is set to a quarter inch scale you can see the line type looks different because you don't see the dashes anymore in this case now if I change the PSLT scale and hit enter so if you look down here I typed it in hit enter you'll see that it's set to one right now. So if I set it to zero and I type in regen all and hit enter, you can now see the line types. So with PSLT scale set to zero, what you see here is going to look like what you see in model space in relation to everything else. So if you look at this symbol list, the text size and everything else, it looks identical to what is in model space but if we were to uh, do the other command which is PSLT scale to one uh, what actually ha happens is if you take a distance measurement in model space it's going to be about a three inch so with a PSLT scale at one and I hit regen all what it does is it maintains that distance in paper space, which means that if I was to extend this out and double click this and I hit the cold water line. Okay, and I stretch it out. Right, I'm still stretching it out. You'll see that it showed up here, right? So now if I was to measure it in paper space, you can see that the distance is about three inches. Okay, so I kind of expanded the viewport out here uh, just to show you that the distance is about three inches still. So what will happen now is if I shrink this down, then uh, with the PSLT scale set to one, it's going to always try to maintain that three. So it, when I type in regen all and I hit enter, this distance should get wider, uh, which it, it just did. And that is basically what will happen if PSLT scale is set to one. So we generally want to keep the PSLT scale uh, set to zero. And it has to be done uh, for each of these tabs. Um, so if, if you look at the other tab here, and you type in PSLT scale, you could see it's set to zero, 
uh, which is different from the PSLT scale uh, set here. So the PSLT scale has to be done for each individual tab. It's not something that changes in one tab and that setting is applied to all the other tabs. So the plumbing CAD standards for waste vents, cold, hot, hot water research piping uh, will be discussed now. All piping has to be on its own layer. Uh, so we just kind of saw that in AutoCAD just now where the cold water would be on the P-CW layer and hot water is this layer so these are the layers for the various type of items and when the lines are in its correct layer the color as well as the line type has to be set to the properties of that layer so this here is going to be the layers uh, that you'll see and these are some of the layers that are in the CAD templates as well as here for the waste vent and the underground piping. And the reason why it has to be on this layer for each equipment is because once we plot the drawings, it's going to have a certain plot style that is used. And the plot style will designate each color, which you see here, with a certain setting. So, for instance, the color yellow, which is color 2, is set at a screening of 50 and a line weight of 0.2 millimeters. And the color of that will be black. So whenever we print it to PDF or any type of plotter, this color yellow will be printed with a thickness of 0.2 millimeters if it's plot to scale. Uh, with a screening of 50 and as the screening goes from 0 to 100 it actually uh, starts lighter and it gets darker so a screening of 50 uh, will be a lighter color than some something that's at a screening of 100 so based on that each layer here is set with a certain color and that color will show up as a thicker line uh, when it's printed out now, if we have something that is existing, so if you look at number two, existing pipes and equipment to be on its own layer with the color set to yellow. So let's say we have an existing cold water. You would put it to the cold water layer and you would set the color to yellow to indicate that it's existing. So if we have a hot water line, uh, we would put it to the hot water layer and we would change the color setting to be yellow. And that's basically how we would indicate something is existing. And the color is yellow because the plot style that we use will make that line lighter because the screening is set to 50. And this way, when you look at the plans, you can quickly differentiate what is existing to what is new because the new items will be printed darker and the existing items will be printed lighter. Number three is label all service valves, meters, and risers with whether is existing and the size. If it's not labeled and the piping is dark, it means that it's new. And it is also on the symbolist. So if you look here, you will see that the new piping is indicated with this line and the existing is indicated with a yellow line so when you look at the printout you will see that this line is thicker than this line and this thickness will be equivalent to the thickness of these these new lines here number four plumbing piping should be shown in general area that it should be installed but the plants are only diagrammatic as a plumber will make minor offense to their preference so the plumbing plants the pipes do not indicate exactly where the pipes have to go but it is just a general layout of the plumbing piping the waste piping within the floor should be shown rather than the piping below the floor except for underground piping if you have a certain floor let's say the basement this piping that is shown the waste piping in magenta color here so this piping is in the floor that it is shown on so it is in the basement floor uh, in this case, it's actually running in the ceiling of the basement. 
and this piping is not in the ceiling of the floor below. So in this case, uh, this underground piping represented by this dashed line, even though it's shown in the cellar plans, is not actually in the cellar, but it's in the space below the cellar floor. So that is why the waste piping within the floor should be shown rather than the piping below the floor. The exception is for underground piping, because in that case, the waste piping, even though it is shown on a specific floor, is actually underneath that floor. So now we'll talk about the standards in terms of routing labeling used on plumbing plans. So uh, the first one, piping that goes through the floor, whether down or up, should be labeled. If the pipe goes up through the floor, it should be labeled with the fixture it is going to. So if you look here on the right, this is a waste piping that's running in the ceiling of the floor that it's shown on. And it's labeled with waste up to water closet. So it basically indicates the fixture that it's going up to. So same with this case. Uh, in this case, the difference is uh, we see a trap. Uh, so the symbol looks like this for a trap. The pipe is going up here. And then this piping uh, represents that it's going down. So if you, so basically that represents a trap such as this. So this is how traps are indicated on the plans. And again, we have to point to the pipe that goes up through the floor as, so here we have to indicate where the pipe is going up through the floor, where it is going to. So in this case, it's up to the tub here. Uh, same here, uh, we're just saying it's vent up and it's actually not going up to any fixture. Uh, it's just going straight up to a vent pipe. So we don't indicate the fixture that vents are going up to. Uh, here, it's uh, another trap, and this is waste that goes up to a shower. And if you look here, the only thing that does not have a trap is a water closet, and that's because water closets, the trap is internal to the actual toilet. So we don't have to add a trap on the piping that is external to that water closet. So number two is hot water and cold water connections can be labeled with piping or just a symbol. So the symbol is here. If you look at the picture on the right, uh, the cold water is indicated with a C in a circle and the hot water is indicated with a H in a circle. And when we indicate the connections like this to the fixture, it usually has to be shown from a riser. In this case, the riser is here we indicate that there is a continuation of this uh, cold water and hot water lines. And then the final connection would be indicated by these symbols here. And the connection of the piping from the riser to the fixtures and the size of that will be shown on the riser diagrams. And we don't indicate the actual pipe sizes on the plans, except for in certain locations, which I'll discuss later. So number three, riser to be labeled along with the size and type of pipes in that riser. So if you look down here, this is a riser labeling. So we will basically point to the riser, in this case it's here, uh, with this leader and we would give it an indication like this and the first one would get a one here and you know every additional one would get the next sequential number two and the next one would be a three and so on and the riser should have the indication of what pipes are in there in this case hot water cold water hot water recirc vent and waste as well as the size of those pipes. So this is one area on the plans that we would indicate the size of the pipes. So now we're going to discuss some um, plumbing design considerations. Uh, first one is for risers and riser locations should generally be located to minimize piping and in areas where there is a straight vertical path or in locations where few offsets are required. 
the pitch of the waste piping should be co coordinated with the depth of the joist and plenum space available. Pitch should also be considered to the building drain and if gravity drainage is not available, a sewage pump needs to be installed. So this is when sewage pumps are required as well as sump pumps and it's when you have the actual drainage piping above the level of the fixture and in order to get to that level you have to pump the water up into the pipe that is draining by gravity. So what this means is that let's say you have you know a building like this and you have a couple of floors here if this is the building sewer line that goes out and this is the building riser for the waste you could have a couple of fixtures here going in here and more fixtures on this floor. And let's say you have a, a water closet here and a couple of sinks on this floor in the cellar. This is the gravity drainage waste pipe. So if you have any fixtures that are on this floor, underneath this level, in order for that waste piping to get up to that level, uh, you need to have a pump where all the lower fixtures that are below this level of the piping can now be discharged up and then it can drop down into this piping here which drains by gravity to the city sewer line which is right here. Number three is piping size to be indicated for service as well as risers on the plants. Other piping such as branch piping on the plans do not need to be labeled with size since the size will be shown on the riser. So here are some pictures. So looking at number two where we're talking about the pitch of the waste it has to be coordinated with the depth of the joist. So these are the joists here. If you look here these are the joists. Okay uh, these are joists too. And it has to be coordinated because when you have a pipe run, it has to follow this table here in terms of the slope. So based on the size of the pipe, you have a minimum slope inches per foot. So if you have, let's say, a pipe that goes from uh, this point here all the way down here, and the height of the joist is not too high and the run of this waste piping is too long uh, the pitch might be too much so you have a quarter inch let's say uh, if it's two and a half inch or less and let's say you have 100 feet that's gonna be 25 inches of slope so if your joist is not 25 inches high uh, let's say it's 10 and the ceiling is right up against the bottom of this joist that waste pipe will now go underneath that ceiling. So that's why drain piping has to be coordinated uh, with the joist height. Sometimes if you look in this diagram here, uh, they actually have a space below the joist. So in this case, there's some wire ties here that provides some sort of space below the joist and the top of this drop ceiling. In that case, we have more distance here uh, where we could run waste piping and uh, with the pitch it may still fit. Also uh, with this type of setup you can actually run the piping this way as well perpendicular to the joist. Whereas if you have a sheetrock that's right up against the bottom of the joist you can't really run the waste piping across perpendicular to the joist unless you follow the rules here and here and I'm not gonna go into this but generally it just means that uh, you want to avoid this middle section because this is where you have the most stress right uh, as the, the the load is going this way and this is a pivot here and a pivot here uh, you want to avoid this weak section so uh, to avoid that weak section here where it's going to have the most stress, you want to limit the notches to one third of that, okay, where you can run piping through. Uh, here, too, uh, there's some minimum dimensions that need to be met. So basically, you want to keep everything 
uh, within a third max of, of this height here and a minimum of two inches from the edges is where you can make a notch so yes you can run it perpendicular to the joist uh, by making notches in the joist but it has to meet these conditions here also uh, you can have certain cases where the piping is in the wall and there are actually spaces provided in these metal studs where you can actually run wiring such as here as well as copper lines here for plumbing and this is a setup of a bathroom you can tell by these fixtures here where these are for water closets that are mounted to the wall and where the water closets are mounted to the wall they have a frame uh, because the the toilet is not mounted on the floor so you need a, a sturdy support to mount those wall mounted toilets so that's what this uh, framing is for and in the back you can see the waste pipe as well as the vents and this is the vent line here which all the vents are connected to here is another picture of a joist where you know piping could actually run this way parallel to the joist okay now we're gonna talk about a plumbing example where we will try to apply everything that we learned in this video in this example it's a residential building with three units alright and the building has a cellar basement and three floors the cellar is a common area for you know where the utilities are, the gas meters, the water meters, and you know, storage, things like that. All right, it also has a common area, laundry, washer, and dryer. So the first unit occupies the basement and first. The second unit occupies the entire second floor. The third unit occupies the entire third floor. So there are two existing one inch gas meters on an existing one and a quarter inch gas service and we have new two inch domestic water service will be installed for this building and they have an existing four inch combination storm sanitary sewer so we're going to be adding this uh, new two inch uh, domestic water service first on the plans and the water service is going to come in the cellar uh, the cellar is basically uh, going to be uh, below grade grade meaning the ground level so we need to draw in the water service um, so we could pick a spot uh, this location is going to get an RPZ which is a device that needs uh, some clearance in front of the device of at least 30 inches so I'm going to put the device here uh, which means that the water service will probably come in uh, somewhere here so that's where I'm going to draw it now so we need to go to the symbol list and take the line type for the cold water which is this one and we'll just put it here and I'll just hit the rotate command the R enter and hit F8 to do a snap uh, 90 degrees and I want to place this right here uh, the way we indicate the cold water service you can look in a previous job and this is a template of a previous job that was done where you could take uh, certain CAD standards from such as the water service so this is the way we typically draw in the water service. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this. Uh, I'll copy this as well. Uh, this is a curb valve. Uh, in this case, uh, we do not need a curb valve because if the water service is two inch or less, we do not need a valve at the curb unless a sprinkler system is attached off of that cold water service. Uh, but in this case, we don't have a sprinkler service and the water service is going to be uh, two inch or less because it'll be a two inch cold water service uh, we don't need this valve so I'm just gonna not select that and I'll take this as well and we'll just move it to here I'm just gonna rotate this by hitting F8 you do a 90 degree turn like this and, and then I'll move this here and move this out of the way 
And you can also stretch this like this and do an extend command, clicking this and clicking this. And this is the connect to new symbol. So we need this uh, symbol here to indicate that this new piping is connecting to an existing uh, water service here. Okay, now this is a symbol of an OSNY valve, which is generally needed on sprinkler service or on domestic water service that is more than two inches. So we're not gonna go with this large valve. I'm gonna select a different valve. So if you look at the symbol list here, uh, you can go down the list and we're gonna use a, um, just a gate valve is fine. So we'll just pick this, just copy it. Come here and we'll put it in here. This seems to be some sort of column, so we need to avoid that. I'll put it here and we'll put the valve right here. And you could trim this by hitting TR, enter, or space. Click this line, click this line, uh, right click, and then click the section that you want removed. And then we can just, uh, I'm gonna go to the layer of the cold water uh, by hitting this icon here. You could click the layer you wanna switch to and start drawing in the lines. Now, this location, we're gonna need a uh, backflow. Uh, it's gonna be an RPZ. So this is our standard detail for a backflow device. So I'm just gonna select this and put it here. For a two inch, this looks a little bit big. Uh, for a two inch, it's about almost three feet. I'm gonna shrink this down to more about um, maybe something like this. So it's closer to what I believe is the actual size of a uh, two inch backflow device. And then we're going to start drawing in the cold water line. So here it is. So this is our new cold water service. Uh, what I'm missing here is the meter. So we need to come here and copy this symbol for a domestic or gas meter. And the meter goes after the uh, first valve. So this first valve is called a HCV or house control valve. And from the house control valve, uh, we actually need another valve uh, called the meter inlet control valve, which is abbreviated MICV. So I'm going to add that valve here as well. So I'm just going to copy this and place it right here. And then we'll put the meter right after that. And I'll just kind of bring everything closer together. Uh, I'll do the same thing, trimming this line inside the valve by selecting these two lines first and then right clicking the mouse and then left clicking the area to be removed. And then uh, now this is the uh, setup for the water service. <clears throat> All right. Now we also have to always add labels. So for the service, we want to indicate it as, uh, we want to indicate it with the size. So what we need to do is, I'm gonna go up to this template and take one of these uh, mText leaders. So when you click it, you could see the leader and the text is all together. And this is a, a better thing to use than a leader that is separate from the text because it makes moving this around a lot easier. By just clicking this, you can move the leader and the text at the same time. So uh, it's better to use this rather than uh, the leader and the text being separate. So let's just copy this and move it down here. And we're gonna start labeling all this piping here. So here I'll label it new two inch domestic water service. Sometimes we only need to label whether it's existing 
Uh, and new, we generally don't always have to label it new since the piping uh, will come out darker, which represents that it's new. Uh, and that's indicated here in the symbol list where this line will be coming out a little bit darker in the printout rather than this one. And the darker line represents new piping, fixture, or equipment. And the lighter one will represent the existing piping, fixture, or equipment. But it's also sometimes good to just label it as new so it's more clear. Now we need to also label this. And uh, generally the text should always be lined up. So I hit F8 to go straight up. Now these two leaders are lined up and I'll just go here and click that and we'll call this two inch uh, house control valve and then I'll go straight up here or, or here actually call this meter inlet control valve and I'll just stretch all this text as a group by hitting S enter or S space making a window and dragging it down so now I have room for the uh, meter and the backflow device so this will be new two inch meter and I'll just label it domestic water meter and here is a new in new two inch RPZ and I'll stretch all of this out as a group so I'll do it again and I'll move it this way and click that click it to this one and everything else is uh, pointing to the correct thing and generally you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping anything on the background if possible because once you print it out uh, sometimes it gets harder to read things if it's overlapping so in this case it's not overlapping this line this text so it's fine also you want to kind of space out the text uh, to be more uniform so here I'll just slightly move this line down a bit and uh, this looks a little bit more uh, uniformly spaced out okay next I want to lay out the existing gas service so for gas we have to use the correct line type uh, and it has to be on the correct layer so if you look down here you can see gas piping is right here on its correct layer, P gas. So I'm going to copy this and move it uh, to here. So this is an existing one and a quarter inch gas service. So we're going to show it here. And the way I'll show this one is going to be a little different. I'm just going to show the spline, which indicates a continuation of the line. And I'll just snap it here. And when the gas service comes in, uh, we have one valve and two existing meters. Since this is a three family unit, we need to add the third meter, which is going to be new. Okay, so in this case, we have two existing ones, and then we'll be adding one new one. So to show that, uh, we're going to need a, a valve, first of all, and the valve used for gas is a, uh, the symbol for that is right here. It's a plug valve, and this is the symbol. So I'm just going to copy this. And move it here and I'll just rotate this uh, this way so it's in the correct direction as the line and uh, we need to indicate the meter so there's gonna be three meters and this symbol can be used for domestic or gas so we're gonna use the same symbol here so there's gonna be three of them right now if the gas meter is stacked uh, but we can't really show stacked meters on the plan since it'll be right behind or above the meter. Uh, we can actually show show it offset and add a note saying that it's offset for clarity. Okay, so we're going to show three meters here. And right now I'm on this layer here. Since I'm basically working in the gas layer now, I'm going to switch over to this layer. And an easy way to do that is uh, clicking this and the layer that I want to move to, uh, which is a little bit easier than searching for it here. 
you know I find it easier just to click this and then click this layer and it automatically switches me to that layer now so I can just start drawing in the lines right on that layer so that'll be one second one is here and third one is here uh, I want to keep a little bit more separation between this valve and this so I'm gonna move this a little bit higher and do a fillet command now this is existing so I have to change that to color yellow so I'm gonna select everything and go here and hit yellow uh, if you look here it's still brown this color so uh, that's because it's a block so I'll just click this uh, I you could use the explode command but uh, it's better to use the burst command and when I hit the burst command it's actually on a locked layer as you can see uh, by that icon so I'm gonna unlock the zero layer so I can modify this now so I'll do this and change that to yellow and these two meters are existing and the third one is gonna be new so I also wanna move this to the uh, P gas layer or it could actually be on the P equipment layer because if I uh, use the gas layer it uses a specific line type uh, that might have this G in it and sometimes you'll you'll get that so uh, in this case we didn't get it since the line is not long enough but if it was for example like this you could see that G shows up so uh, I'd rather just put this on the P equipment layer here and that should be fine and this is gonna be new this is the only new connection uh, since they have two existing ones and one new one needs to be added for the uh, third unit so I'm gonna copy this rotate it and we're gonna add this to each one okay one two and the third one is gonna go on the layer where it's new and this one will be by layer so this will show up much darker than uh, everything else in yellow and wherever we have a new connecting to existing we need the symbol here and if you look here this leader is separate from this symbol here and it's always harder to move this around if it's in two pieces rather than one because now we, we can't just click this we have to make a window to select everything so I have that symbol here in one of my templates see how this symbol is connected to the leader so I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna bring this back down to my drawings and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this one and the and generally this circle should look similar to this text height so I'm gonna shrink this symbol down and to do that you just right click it and you can go into the uh, block the circle is actually the block so you want to scale that down to let's say 40 uh, or let's make it a little bit smaller 30 okay so it looks a little bit closer to the text size so we'll use this and Use that there. Another connect to new symbol would be right here. So that'll be it. So the gas line always needs one valve right at the entry and a valve separating each individual uh, meter. So that's why we have three here and one main gas valve. Now we need to put labels on this. So I'm just going to copy one of these and I'll start labeling it on this side here. I'll start with this one. So here I'll call this um, existing existing gas meter, and I'll put a number to it. Gas meter one, going to be a three quarter inch existing. And for the fractions, you want to put it in the expanded form. So just Control Z, and it automatically expanded out. 
Uh, this is easier to read, so this would be the standard to, to use. Then we'll do it for the next one. And again, you want to line up the leaders. So you could hit F8 and go down one and then the other one as well. This is overlapping, so you could just slightly move that out of the way. Uh, this will be gas meter two, and this will be the uh, new three-quarter inch gas meter, and we'll call that uh, meter three. And we'll need to label the service as well. So go here, and we'll call this. Um, this is the existing one and a quarter gas service and hit save and it's always good practice to hit save periodically because if AutoCAD crashes and you didn't save it it's possible you could lose your work okay so now that we have the gas service uh, next service would be the uh, sanitary waste service so we, we need to put in a so we need to show the existing uh, combination sewer line uh, because it's going to have storm as well as sanitary going into that same line. So uh, we need to get the correct layer. And that layer, if you look over here, it will be uh, the soil or waste below floor. Uh, we'll just use this one. Now we'll just copy this and put it right here. And this is actually a hatch. Uh, so it's a door right at the ceiling of the cellar that leads to the top floor. So people will use this hatch to get to the cellar or move objects into the cellar. So this will actually be below the cellar floor uh, is where this combination uh, storm sanitary sewer line is going to come into. So this is below the cellar floor and we need to add a house trap here. So the house trap is right here. This is the symbol. So we'll just copy this. And we'll add two house traps. All right. So first one is going to be for the existing sanitary house trap. And we're going to add some new, uh, we're going to add a new storm drain, uh, which is going to require us to add a storm house trap. Uh, which will be this one. So this is the existing. So I got to change that to color yellow as well as this one here too. And this will be part of the storm. So I'm going to go to P storm right here. And the storm connects to the sanitary line. So the storm has to connect with the house trap at the discharge of both of them. So you can't have this one discharging in here to this point. Uh, these have to be in parallel to the flow. So the storm has to connect after the house trap rather than before right here at this point. And also the same thing you know, it has to be true for the house, for the sanitary house trap. It cannot connect to the inlet of the storm trap. It has to connect to the outlet of the storm trap. So both of these, the outlets have to connect together and these have to be in parallel to each other. Now we'll, I'll just add the continuation line here and we'll just label these two here. So this will be one, two, I need three labels. It's going to be existing uh, four inch house trap. Next one will be a new uh, standard is about like a four inch storm. So I'll just for now label it four inch storm uh, house trap. Here, I'll just call it sanitary. Uh, this is four inch storm. And 
and this is an existing four inch combination sewer and combination is the term that's used when we have both sanitary and storm going into the same line here I'm going to add this note in our template uh, for plumbing and I'm going to put it right here where there's space and this basically means that all the piping uh, shown is diagrammatic and may be shown in a way for clarity purposes any minor offices can be made to avoid field obstructions or for ease of installation by plumber piping to be run within wall and ceiling cavities where available uh, and where water piping runs within exterior wall cavities the plumber shall locate the piping as far away from the exterior wall as practical and provide additional insulation as needed to avoid freezing so sometimes that does happen uh, so this is just kind of a note that explains that all this piping is is not drawn to scale and uh, sometimes it's kind of offset a bit uh, just for clarity purposes uh, for example here uh, these meters uh, can be stacked but instead of showing it stacked on top of each other uh, we kind of show it offset like this so that note basically just covers the fact that all of this piping is just diagrammatic and it's not exactly where the plumber needs to install it but it should still be drawn in an area close to where the equipment and piping will go all right, so next we need to draw the water heater. In this place, uh, we're going to have three water heaters, one per unit. And it's going to go into the uh, this room here. It's called the tech room. But really, it should be labeled the mechanical room. Uh, this is the chimney. So we're going to place all the uh, three water heaters here. Uh, we have a detail of a water heater here, domestic water heater, which I'm going to be just taking. And I'll just take this as well and some of this piping. I'll also take some floor drains since we have to add some floor drains. So I'll move this over to here and we're going to add the three. So mechanical rooms generally should always have a floor drain. I'll locate it right in the middle. Uh, this is because we have pressure relief valves from the water heater that have to be piped. Uh, for the discharge, if there's a overpressurization of the tank, it relieves the pressure by forcing the water out of tube, and that tube uh, discharge should go to a floor drain. So we should always have this floor drain here. Move this here. This will be this will be one, two, and three water heaters. And I'm going to rotate this so it's all pointing downwards and we also have a third one which is going to be the hot water research so I'll show three three of them here like this and this one will be for the hot this one will be for the uh, hot water research, which is PHWR. And let me just copy that one three times, uh, two more times. So one, two, three. So these will be the three water heaters. Let me save that. Okay, I also want to add a few floor drains in the cellar. I think it's a good idea to have them just in case you have uh, water seepage into the cellar through the hatches that I see here on the plans um, and other sources of water flooding that could happen in the cellar so I'm gonna add one floor drain in the back here and also another floor drain uh, right here in the front and this floor drain can also be used for the discharge on this RPZ uh, because the RPZ uh, needs a floor drain for for drainage since it has a discharge port here, that could actually release water. Now, all the floor drain has to combine to this uh, existing sanitary house trap. So, from this point, I'm going to pipe it to all the floor drains. Uh, and everything else is going to be new. So, we're going to go to P, uh, underground, waste underground. 
and start and start drawing out the piping. So it's going to go here. Uh, we'll run it down this way and come straight up and here and we'll just connect uh, the floor drain here. Uh, the other one here as well. And all these floor drains need a trap. So the way we show that is we make a circle. Uh, since this is a quarter inch uh, scaled uh, plan, we will make it a four inch diameter. So hit D and then it's at four inch right now. So I'll just hit enter. And we'll place this right here. And we'll do a break command by typing in BR space and do that and then we'll move this piping right in the center and this is how we represent a trap okay so we'll do one there and I'll have another one located uh, right here and another one located uh, for this one as well So whenever we have storm piping, <clears throat> every angle, uh, we want to put a chamfer. So the command is CHA, enter. And down here, we can put a distance. Usually, I put about a 4 inch by 4 inch. So type that in twice and do this. And this is your 4 inch by 4 inch chamfer. Uh, same with this, uh, we can chamfer this by clicking this and this, but when you do that, you lose this line here. So uh, what I typically do is I break the line by typing in BR right here, and then I'll chamfer this and this. This way, this line is kept. Uh, another way to do it is uh, you can actually have all the chamfers happen at the lower ones first and then move upward. So you could do a chamfer on this lower one and then this one next. And this way you'll keep that line. In this case, again, we need another chamfer here at every 90 degree turn. And for this, I'd rather flip this around and have it go in this way. So I could do a mirror command, MI space select this and then from here hit F8 to go straight up and down and down here it says array source object I type in Y for yes and there you go I flipped it over and I'm gonna go from here to here and this I'll just do a fillet and that line is gone so I have my chamfer here so I have my sloping line here into my sanitary waste and then I'll have to do that here as well. So this is how the floor drains would be drawn out. All right, next these are two washers and dryers. So we have a laundry two laundry dryers and two laundry washers. For the washers we need a drain. Okay? So the way it's shown is now uh, we do a uh, trap basically it's a laundry stamp pipe they call it it's just a funnel drain that is above the floor to show that the symbol we use is is this so I'm just gonna take this and mirror it like this and erase source object no so this is the default so I'll just hit enter and this is how a trap is shown uh, this circle is not broken because uh, this is the opening to the funnel drain so uh, rather than this, I'll just make it another circle. That's four inch. I could just do this. And there's two lines here, right? So what I'll do is I'll select both, hold shift, select this to deselect that circle. And now I'm selecting the original semicircle here. And now we have the circle here. So now I'm going to change this to the correct layer. It's above ground, so it's going to be P waste. And I will show one for here. And I will show one for the other dryer here. And the line is going to go from here 
it's right here and here and again I want to connect it into here so what I'll do is I'll break it first and then I'll chamfer this and this same with this uh, to repeat the previous command you could just hit space and repeat that step and again I'll repeat it again and I'll repeat it again so now all of these are connected and this is above ground and then it'll go down into this so this will be the same as this so I'm gonna do a match command ma space to match the properties and at this point it'll be going down into the underground piping and then it'll go underground and connect to this underground piping here uh, and to show the correct symbol you can actually do this okay it's this line here it goes in like this and if you do a break and another break here this is the symbol for pipe down so you come along here above the floor and then right when you reach this point this is a pipe down into the space underneath the floor and now you have the underground piping uh, connected to this line here uh, we also need to show the hot water cold water connections for now we will show it with the circle uh, with the C and the H inside of it so we'll show it like this so I'm gonna copy this over and put it here uh, since you have hot and cold for each uh, laundry washer and I'll do that as well okay next thing I want to do is <clears throat> add the gas line to the water heater so each one of these represent the water heater for each of the three tenants so it has to come off of their own meter so I'm going to go into my P gas layer here uh, which is here and start drawing in the gas piping so the first one will be uh, it's gonna be routed kind of along this wall here and I'll have it go like this and the next one should be to the left of this and we're gonna do an offset and the offset should be at least a three inch and we're gonna have two of them and you want some separation here because once you plot this it if the lines are too close together the thickness will kind of join with the thickness of the other line and it'll just look like one solid line if these lines are too close so you want to provide some sort of separation so I'm gonna put a minimum separation of at least uh, three inches I think is good so we'll do one for there there and there and we'll do a fillet command so basically hit space to repeat the previous command and we'll do the offsets here as well so O and then we have the three here so we could just hit space and then left click and click up here click the line click up and then move up and then click the left mouse button again to lay the next line out and we'll do the fillet command again so here space do this uh, same thing here hit the offset command so hit space uh, left click the mouse move your mouse here left click again click this line move the mouse here in the direction you want the next line to go and then hit the left mouse button again and it'll lay that out and then you could do the fillet command again space and there you go so here are your three lines uh, you can again do the same thing here offset one two and do the fillet command one two three so looking at this, I think a better, cleaner way to show this would be uh, to basically move these lines a little bit lower here, fill it all these here, and then I'm going to cut this line back here. So a quick way to do that is just draw a straight line, 
do the tr command which is trim and then just trim all this out and then we have the lines cut here then I'm gonna put a continuation line uh, three times one two and three now this kind of looks strange here so I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to make this a uh, six inch offset. So it's going to be O. The distance instead of three, I'll make it a six inch. And I'll do it twice here. And I'll just move this out slightly and do the fillet command here. And looking at this, it's kind of clear that each of these goes to each one of these. And if you want to be even more clear, you can just put a note here stating, you know, new gas piping to water heaters. Okay, another code regulation is we need a fresh air intake on the house traps. So the minimum size of the uh, fresh air intake is going to be half the size of the house trap. Or basically half the size of the building drain. In this case, it's a 4 inch. So the minimum size for the fresh air is going to be 2 inches. So the way we show it is uh, the same standard 4 inch semicircle. The fresh air is actually upstream of the house trap, so it's on this side. And the way we show it is by rotating this. Uh, I'm just going to mirror this. Hit yes for delete the original source. And then place this here. I'm going to trim this. And then now we can run it. Um, I'm going to show it run right next to the gas line so it's going to be uh it's going to be right around here and here and we need a four inch circle so i'm going to do this the four inch move, move this here and i'm going to put this on the fresh air intake layer which is similar to a vent so I'm gonna put it on the vent layer here and I'm gonna take this since this is going up I'm going to find a reference point and the reference point I'll use is uh, gonna be this corner here and go straight up to the floor above and click this and this is where the fresh air will line up I'm going to bring it closer to the wall, so I'm going to put it here, and then when I use that reference point again, that's actually where it lines up. So I'm going to basically trim this and label uh, this as well. So every time a pipe goes up, you have to add a label to that. So uh, in this case, I'll add the label to here. And I'll call that a new a fresh air intake up. And I'll move this down so it doesn't overlap. And I'll put this like this. So the purpose of this fresh air intake is to allow the drainage to happen a little bit more freely uh, down this waistline. So as waste is flowing down this pipe, it'll basically push that air out, allowing the waste to flow more easily. Okay, now we need to determine where to put the riser. And the riser is just a vertical pipe that goes up and down the floors uh, for all the plumbing pipes here. <clears throat> that will serve the various fixtures throughout the building. So before we uh, determine the location of the riser, we need to get a general idea of where all the fixtures are. So, you know, in the cellar floor, you see some fixtures here uh, for the laundry washers as well as the dryers which will get a gas connection uh, to the laundry dryers. 